So the first password was comparing and contrasting the two systems. Uh, the second part um, that I think uh, we can quite easily um, introduce into our classes, the second password, the second key to success, um, is uh, all kinds of tasks focusing on translating. And again, translating in a judicious, sensible way, making sure that our students' skills get upgraded, uh, because what we do, we do sensibly. Okay. Um, I'm sure you have been using translation for a long time. Uh, it's back in fashion, so it's good to know that we can use it sort of uh, and admit it rather than pretend we haven't been doing this at all. Uh, but what is good is that teachers and students these days use translation to learn about the system, the language, about English, rather than learn how to translate. Because what we do in secondary schools is not teaching them how to translate, <laughs> obviously, it's helping them use translation to learn about the system of the language that they are studying, in our case, obviously, English. This is a lovely quote I would like you to um, uh, bear in mind as well and then think about it. Translation is like a woman. If it's beautiful, it's not faithful. If it's faithful, it's most certainly not beautiful. And this is what our students often do, then translate, but their translations are usually pretty ugly, sometimes causing uh, a funny effect as well. Uh, but what can we do with this as, as teachers and how, can we, uh, how we can proceed actually in this aspect? Well, this is a, a bit of a comic relief for you. Um, if you have a time, you might want to rewind this um, session in a second. Have a look at these two um, bullet points and you will see that these are sentences that kind of will only make sense to the Polish learner. Why? because the, the, these are bad translations of, of English that you can find on the internet. The internet is full of um, ideas like this. But this shows exactly the problem of our students, of translating word for word. And what can we do as teachers to uh, stop this um, activity and perhaps make our students more aware, remember language awareness, more aware of how English um, works, okay? so. Uh, to begin with, uh, what we did in the book was that um, <laughs> we made sure that there's um, um, language for students to translate. Uh, we have heard from various teachers teaching at secondary level that students have very little to say, that they need a lot of prompting and scaffolding. So um, in the first two levels of, uh, of password, level one and level two, we have made sure that there is plenty of information and prompts for the students to translate. So the students will, for example, have to create dialogues, okay, but they will have lots of prompting to help them translate something. So they don't have to waste their classroom time thinking of what to say. It's there given for them. All they have to do is to apply their knowledge of English to translate ideas, again, not words. So if you're looking for a book that has plenty of prompting, this is definitely uh, a good choice for you. Right, so let's go back to this translation. The way we have created this uh, program, because it's a very, I would say, a systematic approach to, to the way we use translation in the book, is the following. We mm, decided to introduce translation as early as possible. This is crucial that we don't begin working with translation in grade three. It's too late. We have to start as early as possible, but obviously uh, on a small scale. So first of all, when you open the first um, few units of level one, you will see that all we want from the students is to, for example, have a look at this phrase bank and translate expressions. As simple as this. This is done at a very basic um, level. With time, we want to encourage our students to look at confusing, difficult grammatical structures and again try to um, translate the sentences using these difficult structures. So this is a step further where students have to concentrate not just on translating something into Polish, but using difficult phrases, translate something back into English. In this case, as you have seen, we focus on get used to, be used to, etc., which certainly are problematic to most of our mm, learners. Further on in the book, you will see that we have begun to experiment a little bit on a textual level. So we ask the students to 
look at the text. Remember, exam is context sensitive. So read the text and translate the fragments in brackets so that they fit the context of the text. Students find this uh, hard, but the more we do it, the easier it becomes like with everything else we do in life. Later on, uh, I think in level two, we encourage the students, first of all, to study relevant vocabulary, relevant structures, and then look at a longer chunk of a text and translate the whole text. If you have a look at these three, um, they're all about shopping, Vocabulary has been introduced and practiced. Now we want the students to translate a chosen um, chunk. Or if you have good students, get them to translate three of those chunks. And then see if the students can use the relevant vocabulary to translate a longer piece of text. And students quite like it because this empowers them. This gives them a lot of confidence that they can uh, translate such a long piece of, um, of English. Finally, we also have a task like these ones where we want the students to, for example, listen or read to a piece of text, in this case an interview, and summarize the key ideas in Polish. Or uh, work on a Polish text and summarize the key ideas in English, which, surprisingly or not, is part of Podstawa Programowa, just in case you may have forgotten. This surprised me personally but it's part of the Podstawa Programowa, so we actually have to, um, have to do it. And it's fun for the students, something different, something they haven't done before. So this is how we stage this, from something very simple to something as complex as summarizing ideas using uh, the opposite language, we may say. Okay, when it comes to translation, we can encourage students to uh, do more. Um, I'll show you some ideas in a moment. We can get them to translate funny text messages, um, which I know has worked, um, at least with my students. We can get the learners to uh, translate more ambiguous sentences to see where the ambiguity lies. And finally, what I find the most useful is to um, get the students to um, translate more idiomatic language to upgrade their English, to, to see what else they can produce. And I'll show you some examples uh, in a second. I'm sure you have seen uh, something like this. Um, I move to the next slide and I will show you where you can find it. You go to Google Images, you put in funny text messages and you come up with so many. You choose the relevant one, like this one, for example, and you get your students to translate it into English. Uh, when you have a, um, a moment and you read it, you will see that this is humorous, this is packed with beautiful spoken English, and this is enough for the students to want to translate it. This is something different, something funny. You can encourage the students to find messages like this and, and translate them. Obviously, you can find them in English and get the students to translate them back into Polish and to see if, if a sense of humor is the same or if the joke um, works. So plenty of ideas to translate funny text messages. Ambiguity is something I have already shown you before. These are funny examples of, um, of badly translated English. Again, I use them very often with my students to show them the stupidity <laughs> of, of translation and how ambiguous something can be and, uh, and how um, difficult to understand. That something like this will be for uh, the um, speakers of English, uh, simply beyond mm, her comprehension uh, in many cases, but also funny. And get the students to actually look at these ambiguous um, sentences and uh, uh, make sense of them in English, to English up their Polish. How would they say this um, in English? This is uh, pretty crucial. Okay, uh, this is what I said was the most useful, is a mm, is a tool, a strategy that I'm sure you have used as teachers uh, before, called back translation. When you get your students to um, translate, uh, let's say, some sentences from English into Polish, and the next class they come, you give them the Polish sentences and you ask them to translate them back into English. It's a standard classic example of a technique that many teachers have used. However, what I tend to do is I tend to mm, use sentences which are more idiomatic, as I said before, to upgrade students' um, English. Have a look at these four examples 
of sentences. Uh, usually, uh, when you say, how long are you going to stay? This is not going to be a problem for students to translate into Polish and then back from Polish into English. However, when you ask the students to uh, translate the sentence, how long are you planning on staying into Polish? They will say, jak długo planujesz zostać? Then, when you give them this sentence, the next lesson, to translate back into English, they are more likely to say, how long are you going to stay? Then how long are you planning on staying? Why? Because the first um, planning, uh, going to stay is simple, planning on staying is harder and more idiomatic. So I suggest you use this back translation to help students um, learn more advanced idiomatic expressions. I should really get going uh, would be translated into powinnam pójść. So your students again are likely to say I should go. But what I want to extract from their memory is the phrase I should really get going. So back translation for me works better with more idiomatic um, language and I hope I've made it um, clear enough. Another idea I use very often are texts, funny texts that students can translate. I mm, get inspiration from sites like, for example, Anti News, which is full of um, really funny, humorous texts um, in Polish. But again, I choose them uh, not at random. I make my choice very consciously. And have a look at this text, for example. I'll give you a second to, um, to have a look. And I'd like you to um, pay attention to uh, the fragments that I have uh, highlighted in blue. There are um, three of them. Yes, na zajęciach jest tego samego zdania, badań prowadzonych w polskich szkołach. Okay. Why do you think I have selected this text? Well, I have selected this, this text for, for, this, for, for these three expressions, which cause problems to my learners. How would a typical Polish learner translate na zajęciach? It would be on lessons. Do we say this in English? On lessons? Jest tego samego zdania. Um, I bet your students will forget to say is of the same opinion. Of will be gone, missing. Badań przeprowadzonych. Students often say make research, not do research. So when you choose text for the students to translate, please choose those where you can catch your students out but not to be malicious, but to help them out, to help them compare the two systems. Okay, right. So to sum up this translation idea, uh, make sure that you don't deprive your students of the judicious use of translation in class, that you use translation to help students learn more about English, to upgrade their English, to help them become more accurate and more precise. And don't worry about students uh, um, learning a bad uh, English through translating. This, this is not the case. It's only the positive transfer of the similarities that the students gain through the judicious, I keep saying, use of translation in class. Okay? Right. So, so far we talked about comparing and contrasting, uh, paying attention to differences. The second password, key, was using the actual translation with your students. What is number three? What do you think? Uh, 